Welcome back. This is Stay 101 on Plus TV Africa. Joining us to look at the agricultural sector, of course, virtually, is a woman at the forefront of agricultural development in Nigeria, the CEO of Enviro Green Farms, Mrs. Nkiru Opareke. Hello, Mrs. Opareke. Hello, thank you for having me on. Thank you for joining. What is the state of the agricultural sector in Nigeria um, in your own assessment? At the moment, the agricultural sector is in shambles. Um, unfortunately, you know this period is a uh, planting season because of the rains. But farmers are unable to go to their farms. And because a lot of the inputs we use are also imported, farmers can access inputs like herbicides, pesticides, seeds even that they're going to plant. And the people who are even in the poultry section are having a problem getting even their day-old chicks moved from the locations. And then there's a high cost of maize and corn, which is the main thing, and soil, which is the main input for a lot of farmers. So getting input and getting things farmers need is very hard for us at the moment. So the agricultural sector at the moment is really, really struggling. Mm. Is this some um, struggle based on COVID-19 or the struggle has been there before COVID-19? The struggle has been there, but it has been exacerbated by COVID-19, mm. especially the movement parts. And uh, unfortunately, the lockdown fell in directly at the major planting season in Nigeria. The rainy season starts in April, and that is when a lot of farmers do all their whole agricultural work. And we've been uh, shut down basically since March. So the COVID-19 exacerbated it. Then you know, within that period, the high demand in dollar pushed the dollar from the 380s to the 410s and the 420s. So yes, we've always had an issue in the agricultural sector. There were lots of government speaking and nothing much being done. But like every other thing now, the COVID-19 is just showing the major gaps that we have, which we should have put in place, and the structures which were not in place before this pandemic came up. Hmm. You mentioned the lockdown affecting the production. Is Are farmers not regarded as essential workers this period? Farmers are classified as essential workers, but as we know in Nigeria, what the government says, what the press reports, is different from what's obtained on ground. And the security operatives constantly harass farmers as we're going to our food from our farms. Uh, they keep extorting money from people carrying inputs. So a lot of farmers have actually given up. We're supposed to be essential workers, but I know how much I get harassed going to my farm and my staff. I have to keep following village routes or trying to find a way around them to be able to get to the farm. So government has said it, but at the end of the day, the people who are supposed to interpret it and actually carry out the action are doing contrary to what government said. So most farmers are really tired of getting harassed. Mm. The last time you spoke to us here at Plus TV Africa, one of your major worries as regards the sector was the issue of headsmen. It's a whole year now. Um, what is the situation of things? We're still having the issues or issue of headsmen. It's just that is the, the issues have been pushed to the background because of the pandemic. But you're still getting reports of headsmen still harassing farmers in rural areas. So it hasn't stopped because there's not there's no permanent solution to it. They are still moving their cattle around. So till there's a permanent solution to that nomadic way of life, or moving cattle from the north to the south, the issue will still continue. So the issue is there, just that the pandemic has pushed it away from the front page news. Hmm. Now, in the face of this pandemic, what do you expect um, to see from the government? And the government has come out with a couple of proposals, but as many things government come out, the implementation becomes an issue. Uh, they are saying they are going to give um, farmers some loans. Farmers don't need loans. We need grants at the moment. We need access to good inputs. So when you're talking about loan and you're making the, the, the conditions for getting the loan, like a private loan, like a working training bank, then you're not going to help anybody. So the farmers are waiting for us to get any support from the federal government in terms of grants, not loans. Because all the loans they have come out through the different government agencies and different government parasitals hasn't really affected farmers. So they have to find a better structure to address that issue and for us to get support in terms of grants, not loans. Hmm. Because it's... at the moment, many businesses are failing, so who can even pay loans? So is the business of farming and um, the agricultural sector not lucrative enough to be able to um, work out a certain type of loan? It is, but you see, we're dealing with living organisms. A lot of people have planted or have grown things that they were supposed to start selling from February. Then the lockdown came. 
So a lot of people have lost money. It's not the case, it's not. But I think to, and when that living not losing needs to be consumed, it needs to be consumed. If not, the three months, the four months, the six months, the one year you have taken nurturing it is a whole waste. Even when we read this, as you see in the US, they are pouring away milk. A cow that produces milk must be milked every day. Whether you buy the milk or not, it must be milk. And when there's no buyer, the milk has to be poured away. So we're dealing with living organisms, different from different infrastructure. If I'm a manufacturer and I manufacture things and nobody sells it, I put it in my warehouse. But if my tomato is ready for harvest, whether I harvest it or not, it is gone. If I don't harvest it when it's supposed to be harvested and sold, that three months are taken to not sure it is gone and there's nothing absolutely I can do about it. So lots of farmers have lost money because when we're just about to take our fruits, our produce to the farms, the lockdown came. So we haven't been able to, so we've lost a lot of money for the things we have much other way period of time. That's why I'm emphasizing on grants, I'm not loan. But somebody who has lost a lot of money trying to convince him to take loan at this moment, it's, I don't know how he's going to be able to pay back. But agriculture is profitable. Mm -hmm. There are different sectors in it and the value chain, so you decide which one you want to do. But those are the primary production are suffering at the moment. But some would argue that because um, the, the, the general notion is that People are on lockdown, but however, they must eat. And then the demand is high, meaning the pricing has gone high. So are you saying there are farmers who are not able to find uh, um, um, people to sell their produce to at this point in time? 80% of farmers are not able to sell their produce. Because the thing is that this produce, okay, Lagos has 24 million people. Less than 10% of what is produced is eaten in Lagos. It's produced in Lagos. It's coming from the north. It's coming from the south, but the interstates are locked down, so how do you get it to them? So if you go to the market, you find out that even when thing, the things that are available, the prices are more than doubled because the produce is not coming from where it's produced. So there's a logistics problem. The, even in, the, even in, in uh, like America, where you say it's a perfect country in terms of this, they're having a logistics problem. Moving the things from where the farmers are, the farmers are in the rural area, the consumption is in the urban area, there's interstate lockdown. How do you get the food? But there's supposed to be an, an exemption for uh, uh, um, food trucks or, or vehicles that are uh, transporting food um, produce. Are you saying that is not the case? They are harassing them and also the people transporting the food themselves are not also being truthful. We have seen in the papers they're supposed to be transporting only food, but you see them also hiding personnel in it. So that now has created also distrust between the police people who are manning the roads and the people carrying the food. So the logistic problem is a major, there's so much demand for food at the moment. You're right in the urban area, but they can't get it from the rural areas. A lot of the cars that carry them from these entire villages to the local market, local markets are shut down because many times they carry them from the rural villages to the local market where the aggregators buy them up and bring to the urban centers. Those local markets are shut down. So except you're going to start going to farm by farm to buy produce, which is not possible, nobody does that. The food are all rotten on the farm. Hmm. Okay, so what's the situation with agri support services? Is there an improvement in that area? Nothing has changed as it was last year, as it was within the beginning of Genesis, so it is now. And now with the pandemic, they are not even going to want to move around into areas because of the fear of passing infection. Nothing is happening in terms of agri support services. Mm. So how would you raise the level of food um, security in Nigeria? I mean, all I'm hearing from you are kind of negative. So what is going on? Well, when they set up the presidential task force, for COVID-19. They never brought in anybody in agriculture. Because the first of thing, apart from people who are sick, people need to eat. The funny thing is that if you're sick, even if you don't have money to buy your medicine, you still have to eat. eat food is a constant. Even when they give you medicine, they'll tell you to eat something before you, before you take the medicine. Food is a constant for everybody. But they have no prioritized agriculture. They, private, they prioritize only health. They need to bring the agro personnel to be part of that residential task force to be able to move food because at the moment there's going to be a lot of food shortages. Farmers are not going to the farm, inputs are not coming in, and countries are locking down. Countries that produce the staples of import are locking down that to be able to provide food for their own people because what is happening in Nigeria is happening globally. Farmers everywhere can't get to the farms, things are not happening. So they need to bring in agri personnel to be part of this presidential task force to decide how we're going to manage the food crisis. Because in the next three months, I can tell you there's going to be a major food crisis. There's going to be food shortages if nothing is done now when the rains just started.
You have once talked about not seeing a synergy between the federal government and the um, Commissioner for Agriculture in different states. Now, is there any um, improvement in the area? There's no improvement. Everybody is running in the side. The federal government is doing their own part and the state governments are doing their own part. I mean, we have even seen it in this uh, COVID-19 issue when directives come from the federal government and the state health ministers, commissioners for health have to decide whether they want to take the directives or not. That's the structure of the government will have. The states has control over some things and the federal has control over some things. And they are not working in tandem. Everybody is running their own silos. So no, there's been no change. Some state commissioners of agriculture who are progressive try sometimes to try to get a buy-in from the federal if they are willing. But basically, they are all working in silos and we, the farmers, are the ones who are suffering from that. Okay, so as oil is apparently no longer dependable as a source of revenue for Nigeria's GDP, um, one of the sectors with more scrutiny at the moment has to be agriculture. How do you react to this and what positives or negatives would this attention bring to the sector? It's, it's actually a positive for us. So anybody who can buy what now has money, the only place you're going to make money in the next couple, one, 12, 18 months is agriculture because people, are, people have to feed. People will realize now that immediately they said there was a lockdown. Nobody was buying clothes. Nobody was buying shoes. Everybody was talking of food and staples. So that has shown you what is actually the most important thing when you talk about human survival. So people have to start looking at the whole value chain. Everybody doesn't have to go into the pure farming. We can start by logistics. We have a major problem in logistics. People can decide to now go into logistics. People can start to go into storage because a lot of farmers even we have post-harvest losses. When we produce the thing, lots of us don't have anywhere we store it and they spoil. So a lot of people can go into investing investment in storage, warehouses, silos, cold chain management. So people need to start look at the agriculture and the whole value chain and see where you plug in. The hardest part is the primary production. I mean it, so I know. So if you're looking at just coming in and just putting your tool, look at logistics, look at storage, look at input supply. Those are some of the places. Look at processing. These are some of the places which there's actually a lot of opportunity in the agricultural sector. Because really we're producing enough, but the problem is storage and getting it to where it's needed. We have a high um, post um, harvest loss. But if it's in production, we're basically meeting most of our production needs. Finally, let's talk about you as a woman in the industry. Comparing now to when you started your business about six years ago, what are the persistent um, challenges women are still facing in agribusiness? The biggest asset you have in agriculture is land. But we know the land rights here. Many times land in Nigeria is hereditary from father to son. So most women, or even if you go to area, rural area, area most women are farming at the pleasure of their husbands or their brothers who are giving them land. They have to liberalize the land use act for people to be able to buy land. And not only that, be able to process the land and get a certification for me. Because when I want to go to a bank room, the only asset I have to get my bank room is my land, yet I don't have documentations to it. So they need to help us with the land use act. If they can liberalize that or make it better, then better structures, most women will start making money from agriculture. Because I'm educated, it's easy for me to meander through a lot of things, but a lot of our rural women are having a challenge with farming and getting access to funds. And the only asset you have to be able to get access to the funds is land. So it becomes a catch-22 situation. All right, thank you so much for your time, Mrs. Okwareke. We hope to have you again soon to discuss um, more on the sector. Thank you very much for bringing the focus on agriculture. I appreciate that. All right. It's been an interesting conversation with the managing director of Farm Crowdy, Kenneth Obiajulu, and the CEO at Enviro Green Farms in Kiru or Parike. To catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content, do visit our YouTube channel, Aplus TV Africa, and please do subscribe. My name is Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching.